Hey everyone, just wanted to give a quick update on what our grow room looks like. Um, we've been changing the, uh, the systems out a little bit. We've got a bunch of peppers and tomatoes growing. But I figured I'd uh, give you an update, walk you through some of the stuff that we've got going on here. So first off, um, we built out this middle section of these, uh, you know, steel wire shelving units, and uh, we've got six flood trays. Each of them uh, are all plumbed in. They drain down here in the bottom on each side back to a, a reservoir that's below us in the bay or in the um, the first floor of the garage, and. Uh, testing out these, uh, this new system or, of pots and everything from Floraflex. So everything you see green here is the Floraflex system setup. Um, got uh, two varieties of tomatoes. These are Sun Gold and these are, I think, uh, a Cherokee. Yeah, I think a purple Cherokee tomato. Those have, don't really have any fruit set on them at the moment. Probably just uh, got a kind of been working on tweaking and getting used to the nutrients and everything here. So but we're getting tons of these sun gold. We've got a bunch of green fruit up there. We've got tons of ripe fruit. We've been picking them for the last couple weeks. But the uh, I've got right now this system gets watered three times a day, 7 a.m., 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. for roughly five minutes. Uh, the Floraflex is cool because with these little bubbler watering units, you can screw off this top and then there's a little insert that allows you to uh, change the rate of flow for the water. So I've got uh, you know more water to the tomatoes, but I'm getting less water to the peppers um, just because they don't like as much water. And then I've got them set up so they go to these little uh, matrix rings. They're, 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 they call this setup the matrix. Uh, system. So these little rings, halo ring type things, are connected to two feeder tubes. Um, and yeah, it helps distribute a lot of the water evenly across the pot so that it's not uh, all going to like one or two areas on the plant. It can get distributed. So I haven't moved anything into these pots yet, so you can kind of see how they're set up. It's just empty with holes in the bottom. This little lid tray helps you uh, distribute water to the entire surface area of the pot. And then you got the little wiring ring, which just kind of snaps on. And then those are plumbed into these bubbler units, uh, which have valves to be able to turn them off and on. And then you know you can rotate and swivel them all over the place, which is cool. So uh, definitely been tweaking, trying to get used to how much water, uh, feeding schedules, all that type of stuff, the nutrient mix up. Um, we're using the General Hydroponics uh, Flora Grow. Uh, system, the, the, the three-part nutrient, liquid nutrient. So we've been using this setup. Um, worked really well in the seedling stage and then you know I think I just shocked the plants whenever I ended up transplanting them because you can see these jalapenos back here. They've been uh, a little uh, you know, a little wilty and you know, I'm not sure if that's because the nutrient had had accidentally spiked up to like 4.0 EC. So it was super, super strong. Uh, I've since dialed them back, but it's been about two weeks now. So I've just kind of been struggling to get them to bounce back. The uh, other jalapenos back there look even worse. So I'm not really sure what's going on. I've been, we've been slowly making changes and tweaks to the amount of water that we're giving them. Uh, I mean, these ones seem to be doing a little bit better. I've even raised the lights to kind of get some light off of them. Um, yeah, so I'm not too sure what's going on. Uh, these paper lanterns, I mean, they're doing really well, other than the fact that they are not producing any fruit. They set flowers, and then you can see here, they kind of shrivel up and they drop and they die. Um, that's pretty common. We, we have that happen out in the Dutch bucket system out in the hoop houses, so. That, I believe, uh, is definitely due to they want some a different mix-up of nutrients. Um, so I'm planning to move these back over to one of these 
systems so that each one of these has its own reservoir and I want to be able to mix up its own set of nutrients uh, since it, you know, I don't want to feed it in back into the main system. So these ones I'll talk about are doing really well. I mean, it's the standard flood, flood drain um, setup. So, you know, they just feed, flood the entire tray and then it just drains back down in this reservoir. Um, I didn't want to do that with these ones over here because I've got, you know, six of them. That's a lot of water to pipe up in from one reservoir, adding a lot of weight. So I think this is a little bit more efficient on use of water directly to the pots. Um, I mean, it drains back through down in this way to uh, the reservoir down below. You can kind of see it all just goes back down um, in that corner through the, through the wall. And it's all fed from a, a PEX tubing with a uh, 4,500 gallon per hour pump. So it's got enough lift height to get it up here. Um, so yeah, still moving stuff around. These needs to be transplanted into some bigger pots. You can see they, they do get, are getting peppers. This is a, uh, some bell peppers in here. So there's a couple of those. We had one and it definitely had like a soft spot. Um, it was way too early for it to have a uh, fruit on there, so we, we cut it. But we've tried to mix in some flowers because we have been battling some aphids up here. Um, there's some habaneros in here as well. And then coming down here is where we start getting into our super hot. So we've got a ghost pepper plant here. I just transplanted these, so a little bit of shock uh, from transplanting them two days ago. But uh, they seem to be doing well. Uh, there's two Trinidad scorpions in the back row there. Again, trying to mix in some flowers. These ones have been uh, pretty bad with pests. This one here is definitely getting a shock. This is a Haba Reaper. Um, so we're trying to, trying to nurse them back to health a little bit. Our uh, Scotch Bonnet back here, it's got some fruit kind of in there in the bottom. So you can see some fruit on that. Uh, I haven't seen any fruit. There's some, some pods in there, but or the, some flowers. This is our Reaper plant, Carolina Reaper. So hopefully it'll start to flower here soon. But yeah, overall they're doing really well. Um, we've got a mix of seedlings that are doing well, doing not well. Some more lettuce to go out in the hoop houses. Um, these are ready by far. They, they were supposed to go out a week ago. Some that didn't really survive. I'm not sure what happened, but uh, overall in the grow room is doing really well. Um, just transplanted or, or actually, no, sorry, swapped out these lights, um, nice and bright. Those are the AC and uh, yeah, AC Infinity, the Ion series. Um, I can't remember if it's like the T3 Ion, but those are uh, those are set up here on a schedule. So I'm just giving them light. The tomatoes get more light than anything in here. Uh, doing 6 a.m. on, 10 p.m. off. So they get a lot of light, whereas everything else I've flipped them back down to uh, pretty much like a 12 hour schedule just to dial back some of these peppers um, to see if I can kind of nurse some of these back to health. Just the nice thing about here in the grow room is doing this all during the winter allows us to uh, experiment and uh, play around with them a little bit more all year long instead of waiting until the summer. Here's the Floriflex pots. They're pretty cool. Um, so these ones I can use with my Grodan, uh, those, those Hugo blocks, those big cubes. So this can sit right on top of that block. And then again, I can take the uh, little feeders and notch them. They sit right on the side of this. So then I can have two uh, tubes and then it helps distribute to the whole top of the block. So I'm gonna try that out in the, uh, in the hoop houses this coming year. And we'll see how those do. But you know, I've got a bunch of them down there I ordered so that I can uh, mix and match and really play around with them, um, which has been, been really neat a neat system to uh, to try and play with. So yeah, that's about it. Um, try to do another update in a couple weeks as these go along, but talk to y'all later. All right, yeah, and I uh, wanted to show you the reservoir. So we're directly below the grow room in the garage. And this is a you know, 50 gallon drum. I've currently got it filling uh, with water. So it's neat, I got my little uh, meter, you know, so I can see how much water is filling. So it makes it super easy that uh, when I do want to fill water, all I do is reset it, turn the valve on, and then put in my desired amount. 
So that's filling with water. I've got an air pump down there. It's that loud noise, if you can hear it. Um, so it's uh, just got an air stone down in the bottom, so it keeps you know, aerating the, uh, the nutrient solution. It helps stabilize the pH and does a pretty good job. But when this turns on, um, it's on a smart plug right here that I control from a home assistant. So that turns on, sends me notifications when it is on. Um, that way I'm making sure that it, uh, you know, isn't missing one. And then it drains back from this drain pipe, which just comes right down from the top there. So it's been pretty good. Easily just come out here, throw some uh, nutrient water into the, one of these cups. I can check my levels and, and make, uh, make changes. So it's been uh, going pretty well. I've got a nice mixing um, sink right here if I do need to, to mix anything up. And then uh, I've got plenty of water. So that's how that works. It's been working pretty well.